Hey guys, and uh, of course, welcome back to the Time Bomb channel with myself, uh, the Bombardier. And uh, as you can see, uh, we're going Casio again today. Um, just before I do the unboxing section, I uh, wanted to give a big shout out to uh, James K, regular to the channel. And uh, he's kindly prompted me to look a little bit more at the GA2000 range. Previously, I'd not looked that much more in, in specifically because they, they lack solar um, in that range but on closer inspection and then when I saw this black skelly version it kind of pushed me over the edge thanks James and I hope that the blue camo version you bought recently serves you well in the uh, upcoming zombie apocalypse um, as I'm unwrapping let me just give you a little bit of background on the GA2000 series it was introduced back in 2019 um, and this recent addition to the line, uh, which is the skeleton version, um, you've got the, this one, which is the blackout, and then you've got the clear skelly version as well. But as you'll see, it's actually more of a, uh, a translucent grey. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's just get this out of the way. So the standard, well, so the new new print tins that they're coming out with nowadays, um, and then yep. I've not had this long out of the uh, out, out, out of here, so plastics are still on, etc. I had a very quick fiddle with some of the buttons just to make sure that I was familiar with most of the functions, uh, but bear with me um, because, as I say, yeah, not overly familiar just yet with with absolutely everything. But let me just give you a quick uh, overview, um, and then we can get down to uh, a little bit more up close um, camera. There we go. So yeah, skelly blacked out version. Um, however, when I look at it, depending also where the light catches it, under that bezel almost seems to have a little bit of a blue tinge, uh, but perhaps that's just my, uh, uh, my eyeballs. Very, very, very handsome piece. All right, okay. So just gonna pause there while I do a quick camera readjust. All right, so I've just uh, taken the plastics off, etc., so that I can uh, and look at this a little bit more closely, but just to give you the uh, the reference, um, as it popped up on the uh, video title anyway. So yeah, we're looking at the 2000 uh, SK SKE 8 AER. Uh, so obviously a British version here. Here in the UK, uh, the GA range, we have uh, these color variants uh, to go from, and as you can see, each of them, you know, really, really do change up the overall eye candy levels of the watch. Um, so you've got a lot of different color configurations. And then as you'll also see that there are um, uh, strap options uh, available, but more of that later. Um, so just coming back to watch for today, I mean, characteristic of these um, of this range when, when they were released 2019 was the departure uh, from the historic ones where the, of the metal case back, um, as you can see here, um, we had no longer have that case metal uh, or visible ca uh, metal case back. Again, more of that later. And then there was also the toughening and lightening of the of the body uh, with carbon elements. Um, these are also features that can then be seen on the Gravity Master series also. However, in on this model, in truth, um, as you can see, um, it's, this is a nice shiny surface. Um, so the, the, the true external section isn't pure carbon at all. It's actually reinforced with carbon fibers uh, from what I can see. Um, whereas I believe on the Gravity Masters, that uh, case is all carbon. The carbon though is very, very present on the internals with the reinforcement to that uh, module protection. Uh, you can see in the middle of that uh, scope there, the black section right in the middle, that's the uh, modular carbon or carbonized modular protection. We can also see from that image that the metal case back hasn't completely vanished as it sits above the polymer back, um, which is not then truly the back of the watch, if you see what I mean. And just if we stay with this image a little longer, you can then see that the top bezel is actually a standalone piece. But it seems to me that those top screws don't seem to be connecting to anything. There's no holes in the, um, in the layer below. I'm guessing they're just for aesthetics. If you guys know um, any different, please, please do let me know down below. But uh, back to the overall, and um, what we're looking at with this particular watch um, is um, 48 and a half mils across. You've got a 51 mils uh, top to bottom, lug to lug, and then a thickness of uh, 14 mils. 
So it's not exactly um, a small piece, um, but let me just bung it on wrist for you. Um, but because of, I think, due to the, the, the lightness, the curvature on that, uh, on that case back, um, I think overall fit wise, um, it doesn't, doesn't appear to be that big. I mean, yeah, it's quite a big lump. Um, and obviously for guys uh, with, you know, sort of six inch wrists, this might not be your best option. Um, but I think for myself, as I say, it's, it's quite fresh out of the box. I've not really had it on, on much um, at all. Um, it is super, super, super light. And as I say, I'm thinking that that case back is going to contribute massively uh, to, to, to the overall carbon aspect. Oh, sorry, comfort aspect, carbon aspect. Boo. All right. Um, so, yes, as I say, so it's only 63 grams. It's not quite as light as a carbon feather. It's pretty close. And I think the uh, uh, bigger bigger dial size here of 48 mil, 48 and a half mils across does allow for quick reading, although perhaps not so much on this blacked out version and also on those sub dials, uh, but more of those later. Other standard stats that you've got on here, it's 200 uh, mils water resistant. Um, and of course, you then got this uh, mineral crystal, standard, standard mineral crystal uh, G-Shocks on the front. Um, the case back, um, as I've mentioned to you before, Really, really nice feature. Um, he says, as you can just make sure the camera decides to agree with me. Um, you've got a polymer mold here, um, which has this really nice uh, curvature um, onto it, as I say. So that yeah, massively contributing to comfort and wearability. And that's then held in place by those four uh, Philly screws. Um, if we come onto the side as well, you can actually then see that the uh, the lugs sort of extend uh, directly out of that base piece. Um, I don't know if you guys have got any thought on that as a design concept. Um, the only lugs I've ever broken on a watch were on a ceramic watch, so I'm not overly worried, but just on sort of the, like the first viewing when I when I saw that aspect of those sort of just playing out from that base plate, I just, just kind of piqued my curiosity. On the other hand, I think that case back, you know, really, really does look good. I mean, you've got standard texting on there telling you what it is with the uh, the carbon uh, uh, core guard, etc. Um, I've no doubt that it's going to wear uber comfortably. Coming back to the front, um, the dial, um, yeah, it's complex and and it's busy. Um, it's kind of got these multiple layers, creating quite a bit of a lumpy depth. I think that's created mostly by this sort of um, inverted X that you have uh, lying across the uh, the, the centre um, as it sort of splits the dial up. One question on the dial, um, as you can see, so for an Anna Digi, um, they've, they've neglected to uh, include a second hands. Um, I'm kind of not quite sure why, because on the Gravity Masters they do have them. And the other reason for asking that is that, oh, I don't know if we're going to be able to see this, I'll try and put up a macro shot just to make it clearer. But on that inner bezel, sorry, on that bezel, um, you've got uh, second minute markings um, in, engraved. I'm not really quite sure how that works um, or what the utility of that is if you don't have a second hand. The arrangement of the sub dials is not completely, completely symmetrical, I think, with that three o'clock subby being a fraction smaller. Um, but the, 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 the sub dial surrounds are super, super clean. Um, uh, but yeah, legibility is not going to be massive on this because of the, the, the dark, the, the, uh, the blackout aspect, but, um, I don't, I don't care. I, I bought this just because it, I, I think to me, it looks, it looks absolutely beautiful. Um, onto the side, um, the detail that you have here, you have these hatched, um, uh, guardless buttons. And I, and I think this is absolutely fantastic. Super, super way forward for, 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 for G-Shock. A great size, that tactile service surface again. I mean, just uh, yeah, second. I mean, yeah, absolute quality. Why, why am I banging on about that so much? Okay, so a little bit unfair, but the fifty six ten. Okay, the only way I can I can operate these buttons is, is with with a fingernail, and that does become uh, annoying. Uh, yesterday we were out and about in the forest. It was like minus five degrees, gloves on, etc. I'm going to try and operate those buttons with gloves, um, and when your fingers are freezing cold, it's it's really really not um, not the best option. So seeing this type of uh, button design on here, I think is is a brilliant step forward, and I really do hope that they uh, stay with that in the future. Some of the other versions, like the uh, yellow one uh, that you can see here, have the um, transparent or cut out hands. I quite like that yellow, but the cut out hands then obviously um, are not loomed. 
Um, coming back to this one then, so at uh, the uh, sorry, yeah, at the eight o'clock, um, we have our mode button, and the mode button operates that little sub dial just on the uh, bottom left at eight o'clock. Oh, sorry, it's at nine o'clock. So when we press it, as you can see, it's a little beep and it spins it around. Whichever one you're then focused on um, uh, modifies the display that you see on that bottom. But as I say, just that little play action there, <laughs> moving that thing around, um, great, great, great amount of fun. But again, um, I think that's going <laughs> to have to resist the temptation to play with that all day, otherwise it's really going to drain the battery. Um, as uh, on some of the other Gs a little bit higher up, you've got what, what they call their sort of hand shift function, which is a double click of the light button. He says, come on, for some reason it's not working. That's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah, just so you can show we're making live uh, live videos, but anyway, um, maybe I need to change the mode on this or something. But basically what that does, that double click there, um, then moves the hands out, out of the way um, so that the, okay, now I know why. It's because they're not obscuring the uh, the, the three o'clock digi dial. So if your hands are on this side, Okay, that double press over here will move the hands out of the way so that you can then see the time um, on the three o'clock uh, digi. Um, I think that's great because that was one of my issues with the Casio Oak was that they completely obscured uh, the uh, digi dial as, as, as you went around. Um, what else have we got? So we've got uh, another stat, 24 mil lugs. And oh my God, I am so, so happy. Not only that, the lug holes are now straight the strap itself um, comes then on a quick release, a little, a little clip inside there. Um, you can swap this out onto any strap that you want without needing adapters. Yes, that's right, a G-Shock onto any strap, no adapters. A chapeau to Casio for finally, finally relenting to do this. As I say, so any other strap from this particular range here, pop it straight on, no, no issue. But then, of course, you know, straightforward spring bar in there is going to give you massive, massive amount of flexibility. So anything from late NATOs to, to leather, whatever you want. The, um, the strap is well, uh, the, that are also hinged or articulated, um, as, as was the case with the uh, Nixon that I reviewed the other day. Now, advantage of this is that, yeah, it, it helps you sort of, you know, fit the wrist, um, fit different size wrists. Um, but also, you can pretty much lay it flat on the table. Um, let me just try and show you that. So you can pretty much lay it flat on the table. Um, so if you need to sort of be looking at it while your hands are busy, etc. Something that, say, um, on the on the 5600, yeah, isn't going to happen. It's just going to ping off. Um, but that does give you a little bit more flexibility. As I say, of using it, what I think to be, you know, hands-free. Um... The strap um, that we've got on here is the, uh, this translucent. It does have sort of like this hatching on the top, uh, whereas it's smooth on the inside. Um, you know, as a skelly, is a really, really, really quite quite a nice uh, resin. I do, I do like it. Um, I've never owned a, uh, a, a skeleton uh, watch before, so this one this one's kind of unique. And I think as well, sort of on on wrist, it sort of darkens out a little bit. Um, but still can be seen as being sort of, you know, semi-translucent, really quite interesting. The buckle on here though, I mean, is, is, is pretty standard. Um, added to that, you've only got a single. Um, I do prefer a double pronger, but it looks quite fit for purpose. Um, but again, too early at this stage to, to really know how, how durable that's gonna be. The watch itself um, is gonna have a two to three year uh, battery life. Um, but as I'm, I've, I've got a sneaky, sneaky feeling that it's got two batteries, one for the light and one for the watch functions. I do find that the LED button um, at six o'clock is super reassuring. You're in the dark, you need a light on your watch. Um, you know where it is without thinking about it. One of the issues that I have sometimes with my other Gs is that, yeah, the button's at two, the light button is at two, the light button is at eight. It changes around. But here, of course, you know, straight with your thumb, um, no issue. Um... Unlike other watches, the backlight um, actually fades. Um, yeah, no, too, too much light in here. I'll pop up a quick video of that um, just now as I'm talking so that you can actually see um, the function of a uh, light button. Um, loom, as you will know, is not a Casio strength. It's only on the hands, which I think is a massive letdown. I mean, they could have at least put a, a loom pip at 12 o'clock on this one. Otherwise, yeah, <laughs> it kind of sort of like defeats the purpose of the 
of the loom. The upside, though, I think that the uh, that, that light, uh, that backlight, just fades out as opposed to sort of you know switching off. Um, back to the watch then. So other functions, you've got multiple alarms on here. And as it's not solar, I think it should mean that the alarms are then a little bit louder, a little bit clearer. Um, I think one of the things that attracted to me, attracted it to me, was was just the sort of the change of the overall design, uh, specifically in comparison to the other Gs that I've got. Um, and I think as well the fact that you've got multiple colorways um, and it's very very reasonably priced, I think that adds a lot of spice to the mix. If you're after something a little bit more Gucci with barometers and Bluetooth, then clearly other G-Shocks are going to be a better choice. But you're, if you're after a fairly large urban Anna Digi that doesn't really rely on those extra functions to justify itself and add to that customizable strap options, then yeah, I think, I think you're onto a winner with this one. Um, so again, if by some bizarre chance Casio are listening, I sincerely hope that they bring out a solar version of this one quite soon. And again, massive thanks out to uh, James K for uh, dangerously uh, <laughs> drawing my attention to, to, to this range. Um, yeah, cheers, buddy. All right, guys, hope the video is useful. And uh, thanks again until, until next time. Again, please do click those clickety blitz down below. Uh, we need some help on the channel. Um, until next time, this is your host, the Bombardier, signing off. Cheers, guys. Mm -hmm.